So we, we mentioned this possibility briefly earlier, and it's kind of an interesting one, and this is actually using light itself with light sails rather than anything else. Yes, yeah, so everything we've talked about so far has had the energy source on the rocket. That's right. Uh, but now we're talking about having the energy source not on the rocket, which means the whole rocket equation stuff, we don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay, so if we can use something already in space with not generating it to get up, that saves a lot of that delta V problem. Yes, it's like uh, having a device run off an extension cord. Yeah, exactly. You don't need to have big batteries on it, makes the light object much lighter, but you do have to have a long extension cord to power so, it. So here our battery is going to be something on Earth, right? That's right. And so the not most approaches for this involve using light sails. Yes. Um, so the basic idea is you have a very big sail made of some incredibly light reflective material. It might be only a few molecules, thick layer of some polymer covered with aluminium yep. or some sort of synthetic material. And this, is, this has already been tried in space. Yeah. This is not science fiction. No, that's right. The ones so far have used sunlight to exactly. propel things. Well, even the Kepler Space Telescope used a little bit of sunlight to help it steer it as well. So, that's right. yeah, it, it's not a science fiction idea, but is it practical? Yes, so using sunlight is good. It's maybe a very economical way to move around the solar system. Yep. Um, but it's not going to get you fast enough because as you go further from the sun, exactly. the sunlight gets fainter. Yeah. But you could cheat a bit and add to your light by a whopping great laser. So the idea is we still use the same concept, but something that we can generate enough energy through light at an early time when it's near the Earth? Yes, yeah, so the idea is instead of relying on light from the sun to propel it, you enhance the light by firing powerful lasers at the thing. Okay. And so the light from the laser hits the sail and pushes it along. Now it's still, the light would fade with distance as the satellite goes across. That's away. right. Um, so, first of all, most of the calculations for this have assumed that you've got spacecraft weighing only a few grams. Exactly. Yeah, which is... This is not a generation ship, right? No, no, no. no. This is a, a smaller than a mobile phone. But look, if we want to go see if that planet has aliens on it... Eh? We've seen you can do a lot with very small satellites That's now. right. Yep. And so there are projects involved trying to work out whether you could send a very small few gram spacecraft. Yep. Even for that, you're going to need gigawatt lasers. And the That's biggest lasers in the world, continuous wave lasers, are only megawatt lasers. Yeah, so we need something a thousand times to ten thousand times more powerful in terms of lasers. But, I, I mean, doable, eventually. Yep. And the laser beam spreads out due yes. to diffraction. We've talked about this from the Earth observation. The light, so just as you get a blurry image of something coming in, you get uh, the exactly. laser beam spreads out. Um, which means that less and less of it's going to hit the... The, to the actual target. Yep. And you need a large, lightweight, reflective sail that can withstand the heat. Okay. So one idea is you actually use multiple lasers on Earth in okay. f called in phase. Okay. So instead of one gigawatt laser, you Might use... Might have a thousand mega megawatt lasers. We know right. how to build megawatt lasers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. you just have a mass production, produce a thousand of them. And, again, and you fire all at them. But then you can see the beam is enormously yeah. spread out. So by the time you're out very far, you're only getting a tiny fraction of the light hitting you. Most is being yes. wasted. So we need to concentrate it so it all falls on our little... And side. there is in principle a way to do this, okay. which is use the way in which waves add up. That's right. So let's imagine you've got a wave of light coming from each of these uh, lasers. And you see over here, they don't add up in phase. They're all, they all have to go different distances to get here. Yep. So it gives a mess. Okay. But if they're all emitting perfectly lined up, this is what's called in phase, so the light emission from all the lasers is perfectly in sync, Okay. then they will all add up only in the middle. Uh, and, then, and so you design it so that they add up at the spot your satellite is, for instance. Yes, and that effectively gives you a very narrow beam. And we know how to do phase arrays, right? Yes, I mean, we do it in reverse to measure light from space. Yep. Um, and in principle, you can do it forward using lasers. Okay. Yep. Perfectly synchronized in phase. I mean, it's a formidable technical challenge, but, uh, but there's no law of physics that says you can't do it. So it's one of these things that's definitely doable, or require work, but we could achieve it, but still not going to send humans. I mean, so, so it, this whole project even uh, needs a lot of technological breakthroughs, but yeah. none of them violate the law of physics. Okay. So in principle, you get speeds of 10 to 20% of the speed of light and reach Proxima Centauri in, in a person's lifetime. And we're not having matter-antimatter problems. We're not detonating <laughs> nuclear bombs. Okay. Yep. Plus, I mean, the trouble is, there's a whole bunch of technologies you have to get about a hundred times better than they currently are. We need vastly more powerful lasers. We need to be able to synchronize them so they emit in phase. The sail has to actually survive all of this. And also be incredibly lightweight because yeah. you can't, the sail might have to be hundreds of kilometers across. And um, if you, I mean, if, you, if, if, if every kilometer weighs a gram, that's still a huge amount of mass. Yes. 
and you need to have a nuclear powered spacecraft smaller than a mobile phone. I mean, you want to build a nuclear reactor in something like this. And it needs to be able to take the images and the data and send that back, back to Earth. I think the idea is to have a laser on board that uses a solar sail as a mirror to yeah. bounce the laser communication back to Earth. Another problem actually is protection from dust, mm. because you know that in space, we talked about space that's junk, right. and even something the size of a flake of paint can blow a chip on your windscreen. So and that's <laughs> at Earth orbit speeds. Yeah, so if you have something at you know, tens of thousands of times faster with something that's already a lot lighter weight, it's going to destroy it. A grain of dust will yeah. blow anything to pieces. So I, I know some people even said, well, the way we solve this is just by sending a bunch of them out and just hoping one survives. One of them survive. dodges the dust. Yeah, exactly. And no one really knows how common dust is in deep interstellar space. But, yeah, uh, we may find will, out. Will, yes. So technically possible, difficult, but technically possible, maybe. Yeah. But this is talking about tiny probes. Yeah. Um, let's see if you actually wanted to send people there. Well, well now we're going to need... Yeah. People have speculated maybe you put a huge array of giant lasers down in Mercury's orbit where they've okay. got really strong solar power to power them. Oh, uh, okay. So we essentially use so much energy from the sun to power that our megawatt to gigawatt lasers becomes... Terawatt lasers yeah, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um, light sails thousands of kilometers across. Yeah. And that could maybe accelerate it. The trouble then, of course, you went to 20% of the speed of light. Um, you need to slow down at the other end. Yeah. And there isn't a big laser around Proxima Centauri firing backwards to slow you down. And if you create some sort of chemical reaction fuel, uh, rocket fuel on that, well, you have to carry that weight and that that's not you. Yeah, it's not going to slow you down that much. Yeah. 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 Um, but I suppose you could use this to speed yourself up and then atom bombs to slow yourself down, maybe. Maybe. Um, one possibility is to use magnetic braking. Okay. We've talked about using the the light from the sun, but you can also use the wind from the sun. Mm -hmm. It's not as much oomph as the light from the sun, but in principle, you could just have a big magnetic field okay. the, and when the uh, around your spacecraft and the uh, particles get trapped in that. So maybe you could use it like an aero brake where you yeah, extend yeah, a giant yeah. magnetic field and slow down off the, the solar wind from Proxima Centauri. So all of this means that using light sails, it, it's physically possible. There's nothing that's violating it. We're not exceeding the mass of the universe, which is a good start. We could invest enough to do this, but really we're talking about at this point sending a small satellite to image the planet rather than visit it. Yes, but there are projects like the Breakthrough Starship exactly. project where people are putting real money into investigating whether this is possible with the idea of sending a probe to have a close look. So this may be the way of at least seeing, is this a place that we want to go, maybe not going there. Yes.